Hey guys, this is Basketball Star 1130. I'm back. Um, so yeah, ha um, it is Halloween night. So first off, before we get started, happy Halloween, everyone. I hope you stayed safe and um, careful. Anyway, um, let's get started with today's video. So um, yeah, let's get started with today's video. I did AFC. So as you know, or as you might not know, the 2020 NFL trade deadline for this season is Tuesday, November 3rd. At 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern, so where I live. So this Tuesday at 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern on November 3rd. So um, I have compiled a list of AF can't, um, players. It just doesn't have to be limited to one player. Any players that I think could be traded and um, moved by the deadline. Not cut, but traded or moved by the deadline. Um, AFC and NFC. The NFC video will be probably coming out either tomorrow or Monday. Most likely late tomorrow because tomorrow's football, so probably after football. After the game, so uh, after the NFL game. So, uh, yeah, but this is the AFC. So, uh, yep. <laughs> this is the AFC, so uh, let's get started here. So, first with the AFC, I got the AFC East. So, let's see. The Buff... Okay, so first the Buffalo Bills. I have them just trading one player defense not okay this isn't confirmed trades and these lists have evolved over the days we've gotten more rumors and um news on some players so um this has evolved but um defensive end jerry hughes is the only player i could see the bills trading it's the only player i could see the bills trading at this point he is getting up there in age i think he's like 31 years old i mean his production has gone down since two a couple years ago um he's been great for us in buffalo but if they can move him and I'll try to give value for all these players. So, if I would say, I would say Jerry Hughes' value is a f fifth round pick. I, I highly doubt they'll get anything more than a fifth round pick. They might get a fourth, the Bills, but a fifth round pick. Do I think this will happen? No. And do I think all these players or trades will happen? No. These are just players in my mind that not should be moved, but maybe teams are thinking about them, at least fielding calls and making calls about them, receiving calls, whatever you want to call it. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Um, Next, we got the Dolphins. So, there's a couple guys on here. Quarterback, Ryan Fitzpatrick. So, um, I didn't do a video on this, so I'll break it down quick. The Dolphins, Tua Tagovailoa, um, is their new starter, and they did him after they had a bye week last week, so they could give him time to progress and get ready for the offense and get fine fine tuned, um, to get up the speed with the playbook and everything and get uh, get up to game speed. Um, Fitz Fitzpatrick was playing very well. Uh, <clears throat> I understand this move. I don't. I just don't understand the timing of it. It's kind of weird timing to me. But um, if if they if they do very bad, then this might be one of the worst moves out for us three. And it's like an internal conflict thing, not conflict, but it's an internal thing. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah. But um, yeah. Quarterback Ryan Fitzpatrick. I would say that if I were the Cowboys, I would be calling them right away because I think Fitzpatrick is definitely better than Ben DiNucci, who's starting this Sunday. If you didn't know, Andrew Dalton was ruled out with a concussion. Um, he's still in the concussion protocol. He, even with Andy Dalton, I think Fitzpatrick is definitely better than Danucci and probably better than Dalton in my mind, in my opinion. So, yeah, um, I think the Dolphins should look to move Fitzpatrick. Um, next, the Dolphins, I think they should look to move running back Matt Breida. Or another thing I heard was running back Jordan Howard. And I thought Matt Breida was really likely, but apparently they're fielding calls for um, Jordan Howard. So if I had to predict, I would say... Jordan Howard, um, if I had to predict, okay, so Matt Breeders' value would probably be, uh, he's a tricky one, these are both running backs, Matt Breeders' value, maybe a fifth, and then Jordan Howard's value, probably be a sixth, yeah, so Breeders' value would probably be a fifth run pick, and Howard, Jordan Howard's value would probably be a six. I think Howard's the more likely at this point. I didn't have Howard on my list at first because I made this last Friday, um, this list, but more rumors just come out, have come out over the past week here. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but, um, Matt Breida. And then they should try, I think the Dolphins should also try to move safety Bobby McCain. I think his value is probably a six round pick as well. 
If they can get a six-round pick return, I think they would be inclined to do that, in my opinion. Um, yeah, Bobby McCain, he's just not in their future plans, I don't think. He, he's been decent, but he's gotten, like, he's just not their future plans. So, uh, yeah, so that's the Dolphins, Trey Kance. Now, the Jets, they're going to have, like, a fire. <laughs> they're going to have, like, a fire sale here, obviously. Now, the first one, obvious one, quarterback Sam Darnold. I don't think they should trade Sam Darnold. They're tanking for Trevor Lawrence. Even and if I would if I was Trevor Lawrence, I would try to go back to that college. I would go back to college if the Jets had the first overall pick. Um I'm gonna try to have more college football content on my channel. Actually, the Penn State and Ohio State um Big Ten showdown game is going on right now. I'm gonna go get at go watch it after this video. Um But yeah, the Jets are Sam Darnold, I don't think he will get traded. I don't think they should trade him. But landing spots, if I think of landing spots for these teams, I will tell you guys. And obviously, I'm going to have the value. So landing spots, I think, for Sam Darnold would be either the Colts or Steelers. Those are only two teams, really, in my mind, I can think of. And then Sam Darnold's trade value would be probably a second, third pick. I'm leaning more towards a second, though. He was only drafted, like, in a 2018 draft two years ago. This is only his third season, so he just doesn't have the supporting cast around him. So, uh, yeah, but I don't think that Darnold will get traded. Tight end Chris Herndon. The Jets, they don't hate using their tight ends necessarily, but they... They just don't u utilize the tight end well. Chris Herndon, I I think he's the I think the kid's ta I think he has talent. I think he's talented, um, but he hasn't been put in the right situation because as I just said, New York, the Jets don't don't really use their tight end, use their tight ends in their offense under Adam Gates. I still don't know why Adam Gates isn't fired, but anyway, if they haven't done that, they probably won't do it. But that's the topic for another video. Anyway, everyone's <clears throat> probably been saying that. Um, topic for another video, though. Um, leave that for another day. Uh, Chris Herndon, I think they should heavily look to move on from him. I would say his value is probably a fourth-round pick. Maybe I'm over-valuing it, but that's pro probably a fourth-round pick. So, uh, yeah. And then, um, next guy on the list, I had defensive. There's a lot of defensive guys here, so. Defensive end, Henry Anderson. Uh, they, yeah, defensive end Henry Anderson. Okay, um, I think his trade value would probably be like a six round pick. Um, I'm not gonna go over in detail like these little players. I mean, they're not little, but anyway, linebacker Neville Hewitt, linebacker Jordan Jenkins, and linebacker Avery Williamson. So that's basically their whole D line right there. Um, but the Jets are going nowhere, so they need picks in return. Um, so yeah, and then. Um, safety, Marcus May. They shipped out Jamal Adams but right before the season started to the Seahawks in this offseason, just like I just said, right before the season started. So, uh, uh, yeah, and then some guys that I didn't have on the list but I've heard rumors about are offensive linemen George Fant and Shuma Yoga. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, <clears throat> George Fant and Shuma Yoga. um, They've obviously looked into trading those two. I think they trade one of them, not both of them, but I think they trade one of them. I'm going to have final deadline predictions Monday, the day right before the deadline, so stay tuned for that. After I get home from school, I'm going to record that video for you guys. Uh, but, yeah, they've looked into trading offensive linemen, Chuma, both offensive linemen, Chuma Idoga and George Fant. Um, next, we have... Oh, I skipped over the Patriots. But I only had one player for them anyway. Patriots guard Joe Tooney. I must have missed him. Patriots guard Joe Tooney. He's been heavily trade rumors. Uh, have thick. He's been in the thick of it in trade rumors lately. Um, I would see the Bears as a landing spot, and his value would probably be. I was thinking second and fourth, but now I think about it, that's too high. I'm just gonna go with straight up second round pick. Joe Tooney, like I said, the. Bears, um, yeah, the Bears is the only really po legit landing spot I can think of right now off the top of my head. So, uh, yeah, Patriots guard Joe Tooney. His value is a second round pick, and a good fit would be the Bears. So, next is the AFC North, starting with the Baltimore Ravens. Um, first up here, I got running back Gus Edwards. He's in an unfortunate situation. His rookie year, he was really good. Er, wait. Not his rookie year. 
last year, he was really good backing up um, Mark Ingram. And let's see. Now they have Justice Hill, Mark Ingram. So Justice Hill, Mark Ingram, J.K. Dobbins, and Gus Edwards. And Gus Edwards is the odd man out, in my opinion. They should just start J.K. Dobbins. But, uh, I mean, <sighs> yeah. They should just start J.K. Dobbins, um, move on from Gus Edwards. Gus Edwards' value probably <clears throat> is a six-round pick. He's probably a bit more talented than that, but it's probably a six-round pick, maybe a fifth round, but I'm going to go with a six-rounder. And then cornerback Jimmy Smith, his value I know for sure is probably at a six-round pick because he's aging, and he's he's not he's a lot not a lot worse, not drastically worse, but he's not as good as he used to be. Um uh, so yeah, um, yeah, Jimmy Smith there, and then the Bengals running back Giovanni Bernard. They should try to trade. I had this on here, but now I'd, I'm gonna take it off though, just because Joe Mixon is out was out last week and this week, and in fantasy, um, he went he was really good. Not that I have him, but in fantasy he was really good. Uh, so yeah, I don't. Th- not just because of fantasy, I'm just going to, I don't think that's that's unlikely. And then we got wide receiver A.J. Green. So we got wide receivers A.J. Green and John Ross. John Ross actually requested a trade, and he didn't mince words yesterday when he said, I requested a trade. It's not football that I don't like. They just, they're just not playing me. Um, and I agree, they're not playing John Ross to his full capability. He brought fastest man on earth. Not really. That's Usain Bolt. But he was 4-20-40 in the NFL Combine in 2017 NFL Combine. Um, and AJ Green's getting up there in age. AJ Green's value is probably a fourth round pick. No, that's too low. AJ Green's value is probably a third round pick, a third and a fifth. I'm gonna say that could package could get done. And then John Ross's value is probably um, a sixth and a seventh if I had to pick. Um, so yeah, I think they'll definitely trade John Ross, but I don't really know about AJ Green at this point. Um, let's see. I lost my spot here. Um, let's see. Okay. And then wide receiver Auden Tate, too. He requested a trade earlier this year. And, like, earlier this year. And uh, his trade value is probably a seventh round pick. He's not that big of a player. And then they have center Billy Price, who they just drafted a couple years ago, I feel like, from Ohio State. Mm, but I think, I don't know what his value is because I don't really know about him that much. And then defensive end Carlos Dunlap. He actually did get traded to Seattle Seahawks. Um, for for center Yam the other day for center um what was it? center BJ Finney and a fifth round pick went to the Bengals in exchange for Carlos de- defensive end Carlos Dunlap to the Seahawks. Um so yeah the Seahawks gave up center BJ Finney and a fifth round pick for Car- defensive end Carlos Dunlap there. Um so yeah and then we got so I think that was a good trade for the Seahawks. They actually get pressure from their defensive ends and defensive line because their defense is pretty bad. Um, Let's see. And then we got... I keep looking at the Jets for some reason. And then we got after... So Billy Ryan, Carlos Dunlap. And then last one here, defensive tackle Geno Atkins. <sighs> Apparently they don't want to move Geno Atkins, but I think they should... You'll have to see if I actually think it will happen in Monday's trade, final trade deadline predictions, but I think they should at least look to trade Geno Atkins. Um, Next, third yeah. team in the AFC North here, we got OBJ, but obviously that's not going to happen now because he's out for the rest of the year and he has a torn ACL, and I had Jarvis Landry written down here, but obviously that's not going to happen now too because they need him because OBJ's out, so cross, cross those two's out. Cross those two out, and then tight end David and Joku. I think David and Joku's value is probably at a fourth round pick, maybe a third round pick. I'm gonna go with a fourth round pick though. Um, so yeah, I think they should try to trade David and Joku, and then um, defensive end Olivier like Vernon. Like they need to do this. Olivier Vernon's he made the Pro Bowl last year, two years ago. I don't know how he had a terrible year that year. Um, so, yeah, defensive end Olivia Vernon and safety Carl Joseph. They might just need to cut him. I don't know if anyone's going to actually give up anything for him. Maybe, like, a conditional sixth or conditional seventh round pick. But Steelers, this is very unlikely. But wide receiver Juju Smith-Schuster, they have Chase Claypool. They have James Washington. They have Deontay Johnson. What I'm saying is here, the Pittsburgh, the Steelers have a lot of Wide receiver depth, they're always great at drafting wide receivers. Antonio Brown, 
Obviously, we know how that panned out. But Antonio Brown, Juju Smith-Schuster, uh, who I have, maybe they should look into trading here, but Antonio Brown, Juju Smith-Schuster, Deontay Johnson, James Washington, um, Chase Claypool, they drafted Antonio Holmes earlier this decade, so, or was it this, yeah, earlier this decade, um, so yeah, but, uh, I think they should at least look into it, but I, it's highly unlikely, I'm gonna tell you right now, I probably won't have Juju, them, Juju Smith-Schuster is an actual trade liability, trade candidate in my final predictions Monday, but that's all I'm gonna say, tight end Vance McDonald, because they do have tight end Eric Ebron, but, uh, this is highly unlikely in my opinion as well. And then cornerback Mike Hitlin, that's just probably unlikely. I don't know if there's any takers for him. Next page, <clears throat> I got the, the last two divisions, AFC divisions in the AFC here. We get, Starting with the AFC South, we got the Houston Texans. They're going to have a fire sale in my opinion. Kiki Cutie, okay, this is really weird, but I'm going to add on these wide receivers because I didn't have it. Kiki, wide receivers, Kiki Cutie, Will Fuller, Brandon Cooks, and Kenny Stills. So that's basically all of their receivers. Um, apparently, the Packers are really interested in Will Fuller. Will Fuller probably gets the most value out of all of those, but they're trying to trade like all of them. And linebacker, Whitney Merciless, but I don't think there'll be any takers for him. And then this is surprising. Defensive end, J. Oh, sorry about that. Defensive end, J.J. Watt. Uh, apparently, apparently, teams have called. I don't really know. I don't think they should trade him, but what if the Bills got him? That's just a dream. But um, the, Apparently, the teams have called about him, so uh, we'll have to see. I don't think he gets traded, though. And I don't think there'll be any takers, like I said, on linebacker Whitney Merciless. Next, on to the Colts. We got quarterback Jacoby Brissett. Um, they have Jacob Beeson. I think this is really unlikely, though. Um, running back, Naeem Hines. Everyone thought he was going to do great once um, Marlon Mack went down for the year with a torn Achilles earlier in the year. Week, week, um, yeah, earlier in the year. I think it was week one or two. Week two, I think. Early in the year in week, week two. So, uh, yeah, but, um, he's done nothing. But, um, I don't think there'll be any takers for him. And then we got wide receiver T. Whale, and he's aging. He hasn't been really that good this year. Um, and tight end Jack Doyle. Because they have, at tight end, they have Mo Ali Cox, Trey Burton, and Jack Doyle. So, they don't have a stacked room, but they have a crowded tight end room there. Um, so I have to see what happens with that. Um, so yeah, and then we got, I'm going to try to speed up here just because I don't want to make this an overly long video. Then we got the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, running back Chris Thompson, just because James Robinson has kind of took over that starting role now. Wide receiver Chris Conley, because he'll be a free agent after this year. And they do have D.D. Westbrook and, um, D.J. Chark. So, uh, yeah. And that, and wide receiver D.D. Westbrook, see, just like I mentioned. So, I think one of these guys will be traded. D.D. Westbrook will probably bring in more value, but I think they'll be more hesitant to trade D.D. Westbrook. Just because of the name, his namesake, just because of his name and the organization loves him there. Um, let's see, Off offensive tackle Cam Robinson, he's been disappointing since he's been drafted in 2014, I think it was, so yeah, um, linebacker Miles Jack, Miles Jack is a great player, he's like one of the few star players in the Jacksonville Jaguars, um, actually I think he might be the only star player, he's very, he's still like very young, he's, he's, it's still only his fourth year and he's still only 25 years old, so he, if he goes to the right system, right fit, good team, he, Okay, he's a linebacker. I think he should go for a 3-4 team just because the Jaguars play him at defensive end a lot for some reason. And the Jaguars, I think, run a 4-3, and he would be better suited at a, as a um, at a 3-4 or as a, in a 3-4 scheme just because I think he would get better opportunities there, better quarterback rushing lanes, better coverage. So um, And he is one of the better coverage linebackers in the league. So, um, yeah, and then linebacker – wait. Oh, yeah, linebacker Quincy Williams and safety Gerard Wilson. I don't think there will be any takers on those two guys. I just wanted to add him in there. Next, Titans wide receiver Corey Davis. He went fourth overall in 2017, but, yeah, fourth overall in 2017, but he hasn't been the, He's been good, but he hasn't lived up to that. That's why you don't take a wide receiver in the top ten. Um, and So, yeah, and tight end Anthony Ferkser because they do have Johnny Smith. But I don't think anyone will take the takers on him. And then offensive tackle Isaiah Wilson. He did get arrested earlier this year, earlier this season, I believe. I think it was like four or five weeks ago. It was early in the year. 
when uh, the season was still getting rolling, getting going. So, um, yeah, but, um, and then linebacker Vic Beasley Jr. Vic Beasley has been disappointing. Like, everyone overhyped the signing, and I said, slow your hole. He's not going to be that, he's not going to be that impressive. They signed Jadavion Clowney, too. Um, so, uh, yeah, but, um, Jadavion Clowney has been much more productive for them. And then the last AFC South teams, um, Trey Cannons, Broncos, off, I only have one. Offensive tackle Garrett Bowles. He gets a holding penalty like every other play, like five a game, especially last year, like holding. And you knew it was on Garrett Bowles every single time. That's why I think they should just cut him. Chiefs, I honestly had none. There's like a, I think this is the only team where um, I had none. There were some other teams that I had none, but then rumors came out this week. Written down is done, but then rumors come out this week. So I do have players, but those are the NFC teams. So get to that tomorrow, late tomorrow for the NFL games after the football slate tomorrow. Chiefs, none. It sounds weird to say, but I don't think they need to trade anyone. Um, Chiefs, AFC West, that was. Wait, what? Oh, no, 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 sorry. That was the AFC West, Broncos, and Chiefs. Third team in the AFC West here, Las Vegas Raiders. Defensive end, Arden Key. He's been disappointing. Max Crosby has been better. Christian Wilkins has been better, even though he's not much better, but he's been better. Um, Defensive end, Carl Nassib. And cornerback, Nevin Lawson. Nevin Lawson gets burning coverage so many Nevin times. Lawson gets burning coverage so many times a game. It's honestly really annoying. Um, and that Raiders defense is very good, so it's just time to move some pieces around. And then last AC team here, and last AC West team here, we got the Los Angeles Chargers. I had none here, but honestly, uh, I've heard some rumors, but Melvin Ingram. Melvin Ingram is the one player I heard rumors on. They could trade Melvin Ingram. His value is probably a... Uh, second and fourth, second and fifth round pick. I'm gonna go with. That's probably his value, but um, Mel defensive end Melvin Ingram. But yeah, guys, that's all the um trade, not trade scenarios. That's all the tr well, I guess kind of scenarios. That's all the trade candidates and trade assets I have for each AFC team. Tune in tomorrow and check back tomorrow for the after the football games. I'll record the video and upload it to my channel. But um, tune back tomorrow for the NFC. Trey Kent's video, and happy Halloween. See you later. This basketball star 1130. Bye.